Hey, this is Darren Waller, tight end for the Las Vegas Raiders. I am the Walleris, and you are listening to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Cuckoo, cuckoo! Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ah! Fantasy footballers back with you Tuesday, May 12th. Danny, Mike, Jason, the Walrus joining mm. you. Oh, goo goo goo. <laughs> Judge Giamatti is here as well. We have a great show for you today. How are you doing, Brooks? Good. I'm guessing well. I'm doing well. Thank you for huh. asking, though. Mm. You? Yeah, you're welcome. We did it. Excited to be with you. Regress or impress episode today. We'll be walking through some of last year's best players, and whether we think uh, a repeat is in store. I've been watching enough of this Jordan documentary. I got repeats on the mind. We want to see if any of these uh, fine players have the ability to go back to back. Well, the, the problem with talking about Jordan is we're trying to spot outliers here, guys who have had seasons <laughs> and they can't possibly repeat it. <laughs> and you can't talk about that when you're talking about Jordan. Like he he smashes all outliers. I just want to know what would have happened if he didn't retire. If he I can tell you eight in a row, <laughs> <laughs> that's what happens. I remember as a Suns fan growing up how upset I was that he retired shortly after uh, dismantling us and our championship dreams. It's like why couldn't you have done this a year and a half earlier? Speaking of regress or impress, Jason, May 3rd is coming gone. Uh, how is the quarantine diet? Quarantine diet Regress has, or impress? Uh, <laughs> it has impressed by oh. o- only by comparison of pre-May 3rd diet. I would say right now I'm just av- I'm just an average human being. I'm Gotta not start eating. somewhere, man. Good yeah. for you. And and by by an average so before human being, then you were not average. No, I think I've cut like twelve thousand calories out of my <laughs> diet every day. Now I've just got like a normal five thousand calorie diet. Even oh. after the discovery that we can get Krispy Kreme donuts delivered, uh, hashtag not a sponsor. Oh, hashtag please be a sponsor. But, <laughs> yes. Oh man, I don't know. Also, no, hashtag no, don't be no, a sponsor, don't. please. No. Please yeah. don't be a sponsor. The Whatever you do, Krispy. Done. Oh, uh, yeah, no, even after that, I would say I, I've, I'm, uh, I'm just on an average uh, American right. male diet, which is a huge improvement. I am, I'm right at the stage now where uh, I did the quarantine shave down hair, and it's starting to get just, uh, just poofy enough where I'm saying I got to either do it again or go hat mode while I grow it out. That's gotta, my current dilemma. I, I want, I don't want I'm not going to spit oh, this head. Man. Yeah, I want to see it, man. And the people want to see it. the Foot Clan want to I see don't think they your do. Jordan haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Jor- it was good like, enough for Jordan. Looking like Mr. Clean. Oh my goodness. Uh the NFL has released their schedule. This was an exciting Thursday night in the quarantine space when the NFL <laughs> releases their schedule. So I've never seen more articles written about the NFL schedule than this year in particular. But do you have any takeaways from what you saw at first glance? My my takeaways, mm. the first thing I looked for. I don't like Jason's takeaway because it's true and I don't like it. Right. No, I don't either. In fact, you know, I, I've, I've finished uh, statting out uh, Sam Darnold and I, I think he's, uh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Daniel Jones. And I think he's got the ability to, to take a step forward this year. But him as well as Ryan Fitzpatrick are mm. off of my uh, you know the the handful of really really late round streaming quarterback options that I'm happy to uh, take and play because of great matchups. Um, Daniel Jones starts the season with the Steelers, whose defense was unbelievable last year. The Chicago Bears in Chicago, and then the San Francisco 49ers. That is a murderer's row, presumably, to start <sighs> the season. And when yeah. you're talking about these guys that could step forward, could be valuable for fantasy, certainly a, a matchup play for Daniel Jones and Ryan Fitzpatrick, who he starts the season with uh, the New England Patriots in New England, great defense, and then Buffalo. Um, oh, no. I'm just not, I think you're you know, forgetting what Fitzpatrick 
did to the Patriots last year. <laughs> sure. Um, sure, Mike. He's all uh, yours. I'm, I'm also remembering what Fitzpatrick has done to himself many times <laughs> through his career. So those two guys. Does that mean two a week, two a week had, three? <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, honestly, because of the opening schedule for Miami, I did end up statting Tua for a few more games than I thought I would um, this season. So it, it's one of those things, if the schedule had opened differently, those guys would have been people I would have looked at at the end of the draft, but they're off my board. Mike, do you got any takeaways yeah, from that? Yeah, I'll jump in here, and it's the Chargers. I, the Los Angeles Chargers could get – I don't know. I, like I don't have a proclamation of who I'm pumping up here. Like, Does it mean that, that Tyrod Taylor – who is one of those, you know, he's a late round guy. You could take a shot on Tyrod. He's got the cheat code. He's got the running ability. And we know, or it's very possible he starts a few games, but their schedule opens up with the Bengals. Not, not a tough matchup. Kansas City, that one's rough. Carolina, back to open and easy. Tampa Bay is a bit of a crapshoot. But like then you have this, this four-pack right in the middle of the season of the Jets, the Dolphins, the Jaguars, the Raiders. Like, the Chargers could have some real, real fantasy value uh, c- coming with Tyrod Taylor and, and company at the beginning of the year. So they're very interesting to see are they able to open it up, or even if if it's Herbert at the beginning of the year, do we see him, the rookie, get off to a hot start? Yeah, I I looked at Josh Allen and Buffalo, and they're one of my favorite teams to follow for this upcoming twenty twenty season. They get off to a just a wonderful start to the season Detroit the Jets the Dolphins the Rams Raiders uh, yeah it's nice for for Allen but one of the things that came up is is uh his end of season schedule looks really really rough and sometimes fantasy owners would look at that and maybe that's the the tiebreaker for them 49ers Steelers Broncos Patriots uh before week 17 lets up with the Dolphins Actually, Chargers even before that. Chargers, 49ers, Steelers, Broncos, Patriots. The five games after the bye. Rough. <laughs> it seems pretty scary. It seems pretty scary. But at the same time, I don't, I'm don't. i not going to let that end of season uh, gauntlet dissuade me from somebody like Josh Allen. That is a long time from now. One team gets one significant injury. All the turnover that happens defensively. And all of a sudden, that becomes two or three tough games instead of five. And, uh, you know, you, you can't draw too many conclusions is kind of what I'm getting at because year to year, there is a lot of change and two or three pieces on the, on a defense makes a big difference. And in today's NFL, uh, you have a lot more opportunity to put up big points even when you have tough matchups just due to garbage time. And, and you know, we watch Jason pull his hair out every year dealing with garbage time on these matchups he predicted to go one way and the fourth quarter changes everything. So yeah, that, I, I totally agree. The problem for Josh Allen is, I mean, he's going to be naturally, he'll, he will be one of the uh, higher drafted quarterbacks. He's had two solid years for fantasy football. And the fact that his schedule is so easy and people will catch up with that. Like we're going to tout his easy or what his perceived easy opening to the beginning of the schedule other places are going to tout it as well. Like Josh Allen might move up in ADP to a place where he's not even close to a value. That's my concern for him. Yeah, yeah that I mean, makes sense. It could happen. One of the things, you, you you know, if you're listening, you might have caught on. We care so much more about the beginning of the season than the end of the season because historically yes. speaking, like these, te- we're not going to be right about what teams are necessarily great defensive teams, uh, you know, next year, especially by the end of next season. We're not too worried about the playoff schedule because um, it's ho- so many things change by that time. Worry about the beginning. With one exception, if you are in a league, that starts your playoffs a week earlier than most. If you start in week 13, you should be aware that uh, Carolina and Tampa Bay have their bye week super late this year in week 13. So, the, and there's a lot of fantasy, you know, you got Christian McCaffrey and uh, Mike Evans and, uh, you know, uh, Chris Godwin, all those, all those pieces where I am positive that, you know, my scouting might not be great against certain defenses and the changeover, but I don't think they're going to score against the bye week. So no, that unlikely. one I'm, that one I'm confident in. Nice one. Yeah. <laughs> Watch they all get traded. <laughs> well, at least now it makes sense why you posted that in the Slack channel the other day. Because it didn't 
it didn't really make sense. I thought you were just making an observation that like somehow Mike Evans and Christian McCaffrey have a buy in the same week. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, that w- that doesn't seem like a really big deal, Jason. Yeah, no, lots of players have bye weeks on the same week. But yeah, if, <laughs> if you're in that, we had this, uh, I think it was two or three seasons ago with Derrick Henry. The Titans were, yes. had that super late buy. But um, there are leagues that, that have a week 13 playoff. And, and I would I would pivot personally on that. And, and I'll add this observation from the NFL schedule. I'll consider a optimism takeaway. But the NFL did not change their schedule to as some had rumored to front load the schedule with uh interconference games games that would be perceived as as less important so they could get carved away from the schedule we obviously don't know what's coming and what the landscape of of the country will look like or what the nfl games will look like but they are proceeding as um scheduled with the nfl season so that was a takeaway as well one that i'm sure every single fantasy owner is excited about Mm-hmm. But you can uh, follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Check out the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Tons of new articles each and every week. You can get your fantasy fix over there, thefantasyfootballers.com. want to thank everybody supporting the show on Patreon, which is jointhefoot.com. And the ultimate draft kit is just just under three weeks away. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and to answer a question I saw on Twitter about it, yes, there will be an app version again. That was very popular last year. We're not getting rid of that by any stretch. Some people that bought it last year and have the app have noticed it isn't updated yet. It will be updated. It will be ready to go for the release. Yet, man. Yeah, it's not out. It's not out yet. Well, you're eager, Mike. You know, you refresh, you pull down, refresh, refresh, refresh. Uh, June Fair. 1st. June 1st, yeah. So uh, I don't think that there's any other news. Uh, the NFL is no longer doing the pass interference review. Thank goodness. It seemed like it was a one year. They did it just to make the Saints feel good for a year, <laughs> That's, or bad. I don't know, you know which one either. that is. It was it was just to placate their their desires and their needs. Like the you knew when, whenever they threw the challenge flag at the pass interference, it was guys they're they're not turning over this call. I don't I don't care that if the defender mugged him, they're not overturning it. It was always it was always mind blowing. The the few times that they actually did overturn, you're like, wait, what? What? Why did this one change and the other ones haven't? So thank goodness it's gone. We don't need it getting it, and it got in the heads, man. You could see the coaches like turning over every single call that was like questionable. You could see it in their face. Go, mm, mm, I want to throw this flag. I want to do it. It was impossible for the NFL to implement that rule because if you start to give those calls, it yes. just it just snowballs. Yes. And it makes the NFL unwatchable. So, yeah, they made the right call. And that's the one thing the NFL does do pretty well, which is they're willing to dip their toes in some of these rule changes. Some of them have been great. They toes stick out. around. Toes deep. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I don't I don't know. Got to uh, dive all the way on. in. We're mo- it was toes out, Jay, just for the sure. record. We don't need to go toes deep. <laughs> that don't impress me much. <laughs> All right, regress <laughs> or impress featuring Shania, uh, <laughs> apparently. I forgot about that drop. Let's start with Dak Prescott. Last year, was uh, he finished the season as the QB2. That that makes this a very difficult line for regress or impress. He's yes. going to regress because Pat Mahomes was not uh, out for 16 games, but wh- if you've got him as my quarterback three, does that? Is, is that really regressing? No, that would be impressing. That would be sustaining, I would say. If he ended up as the quarterback three in 2020, which is where I have him as well, Jason, I think that that makes him an impress. Do you have him at that high, Mike? I, I have Dak Prescott very high as well, but the, the question for me is not will he regress, it's just how far back does he fall because I don't have him at number two. Uh, but like in 2018, he was the QB 12. Does he drop to that type of a level, or does he maintain that he is one of the the best fantasy quarterbacks that you can have on your roster? I took a look, and since the year 2000, the average regression for quarterbacks who hit that 4,900 yard mark, it's almost 600 yards of of regression the following year. Since and what year? Since the year 2000. Okay. And really, the the only quarterbacks who have actually 
hit a back to back year of forty nine hundred that five thousand range, which like that's an insane yardage total to to start the conversation with. But Drew Brees and Matt Stafford since the year two thousand, those are really the only two guys that have have been able to put together back to back seasons of of that volume of, of passing yards and like if you take them those two guys out of that equation I was talking about for average regression the average regression plummets 700 yards uh so guys if you're throwing 4900 yards just imagine chopping 700 yards right off of there so it's it's a difficult situation to figure out what Dak will be because his situation has actually <laughs> improved you, you spent a first round pick on CD Lamb, one of the best wide receivers or one of the best prospects in a very long time. To me, I know it, it's it's kind of a joke now on the show, but going from Jason Witten to Blake Jarwin is an upgrade. That's like you can't this, argue this that, version of Jason Witten. I, I agree. Yes, yeah, that's what, like Jason Witten. The the past two years he's played six point four yards per target. Meanwhile, Blake Jarwin's up in the high eights. He's just a better he's a, he's a better pass catching option at this time compared to Jason Witten. So Dak Prescott, Dak Prescott's situation points towards him impressing, but historically you just can't really bet on him duplicating 4,900 yards or more. Well, the, yeah, the a- nice thing for, for Dak is I, I've got him dropping in yardage, but he, he also, he, you say he only had three rushing touchdowns last year. Yeah, that's true. But you know, he averaged six rushing touchdowns, a year you know in the first three seasons so I I I think that there's uh, you know I'm looking at my stat line that I've got him down for and even though he's down in yardage I have him literally dropping two fantasy points total on the season that's how my stat line worked out yeah I think it's an interesting situation for him because of what you illustrated Mike if you look at your options as a fantasy owner and where you're drafting quarterbacks I think one important consideration that Dak has brought about by his play last year and then what the team has done around him is the fact that he is a player that can be the number one quarterback. That probably was not something we would have conceded to Dak heading into last year. Competitive in that top five potential, but I don't know if we ever looked at him. And now you look at him and what he did last year, you take CeeDee Lamb and you take the the contract, another year of Gallup, like you said, the Jarwin situation, Zeke's pass catching, Mike McCarthy, and then the second year of Kellen Moore. Like, There's a lot of reasons there to say, Mm -hmm. when I draft Dak, I could be drafting the top quarterback on the season if things go the right way. And the defense might help him out as well. Like You had those quotes a little bit ago uh, leaking out that McCarthy thinks that his offense is the way that he's going to have to win games. He's going to have to win in shootouts. Yeah. No, that makes sense. Uh, Anything else to add there, Jason? No. All right. Let's talk about Josh Allen. (laughs) Oh, excellent. Uh, I think that Josh Allen is is a pretty interesting debate. Last year, he finishes the quarterback six. The quarterback six. A very steady year for Josh Allen. We've talked about it before. Leading into last year, he had come off these kind of monstrous games, heavy rushing yardage, Mm -hmm. uh, entered 2019 with a lot of the same type of hype that I'm kind of hearing about him heading into 2020, but he had more of a steady year. I mean, you look at those first five weeks, he only had one of them in the top 12. Um, He really didn't consistently give you you a top 10 performance on the season. He had two games inside... Um, I'm sorry, three games inside the top 10 over 17 weeks. So it's interesting when you look at the addition of Stefan Diggs is obviously huge. It just comes down to what this team is willing to do with its offense. The division seems like it's there for the taking for Buffalo and for Josh Allen. Last year, QB six, is it a regress or is it an impress? Uh, I don't know where you guys are going to land. Uh, I am a big believer in Josh Allen this season. I I think he's he's um, for fantasy. He is an excellent option the same way that Cam Newton was an excellent option. A truly uh, gigantic mobile running quarterback who's going to put up enough yardage and 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 rushing touchdowns to where if the passing could just come along a little bit and be average, you're going to have a real fantasy star. And he has had you know guys like 
Zay Jones and Robert Foster and and then finally gets upgraded to John Browns and Cole Beasley's like John Browns and Cole Beasley's are not NFL wide receiver ones for their teams. They're, they're just not. Uh, now you get a legit option while John Brown and Cole Beasley are there in the roles that they should be in and you give them Stefan Diggs. I, I, you know, I, I, that has to improve his, his passing game. I mean, the but yards, by how after, much I, yeah. I, so I have his, this, this might sound outlandish to you, but it's, it's not just the addition of Stefan Diggs. It's, it's a lot of uh, things changing and coming into his third year, I have him increasing his yardage almost 700 yards from what he did last year. All right. So I've, I've got him throwing 3,700 yards. I don't think that is a, a crazy number. And that is a monstrous change from the year prior. So what are your, what's the passing attempt volume? Like his volume has gone up by how much in your projection? Yeah, I have him throwing for 512 passing attempts versus 461 okay. the year prior. Yeah, that's, that's a still, really big lift. That still would put him, um, you know, certainly in the bottom half of passing attempts. But I think that you know, when you when you go out and you trade a bunch of options and you you bring in a a, a receiver like Stephon Diggs, it shows that you're wanting to hope you're hoping you can open the offense up a little bit. Sure. I mean, that's what I see their indication. I think they're going to be able to. Yeah, I QB six. I, I guess I'm going to go with regress, and I love Josh Allen. I love the Bills. I love their potential to win games, but I still think at the end of the day, with a defense that they have, and with Josh Allen's, he he showed towards the end of last year, um, <laughs> that he can make some mistakes with the football. <laughs> wait, <laughs> wait, you're just seeing that? Well, I when when push what? came to shove at the end of the year, <laughs> he, he made doing? some mistakes, and sometimes you know McDermott came out and even talked about it. You know, trying to do too much loves the fight of the player, but trying to do too much. So I still think this team takes a manage the offense viewpoint with Josh Allen. So I like the ceiling of other players like a Deshaun Watson, like a Kyler Murray, even Drew Brees. I like their ceiling better than I do Josh Allen's. Although I consider Allen to be one of the more steady week to week options at the quarterback position because of the rushing yardage. He he didn't run as often last year or for as many yards per attempt at all than he did in twenty eighteen. It went but down he still pretty gives substantial. You, yeah, it was down substantially, but it's still over a hundred rushes, still five hundred plus yards on the ground, and that's significant for the, the quarterback touchdowns. position. Yeah, and the touchdowns are huge and they're gonna lean on him there. It's just a matter of do I think I'm going to get more of the same of Josh Allen from last year? I do. That's kind of what I where I'm at. Mike, are you a regress or an impress? I am a regress from QB six, but I, like I have him at QB eight right now. I'm not as bullish on uh, the improvement of the of the passing game as Jason is. I have him going up, but it's more of like a, a 400 yard, like three to four touchdown improvement instead of uh, where, where Jason sees him really taking the next step. The rushing yards I was talking about, he went from from uh, fifty two yards, fifty two rushing yards a game as a rookie. That dropped down to thirty two. Now thirty two rushing yards a game from your your quarterback, that's very nice. But will that sustain at thirty two with the addition of Zach Moss and Devin Singletary actually growing as a player? Like the 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 efficiency inside the five by Frank Gore and Devin Singletary was comically, comically bad last year, like worst in the league to a situation. Uh, so do they get a little bit better, and does that take away from Josh Allen getting nine rushing touchdowns? Because because if, if, if Josh Allen drops from nine rushing touchdowns down to six and the passing yardage doesn't grow like Jason's projecting, then you, then you might be a little bit disappointed in, in Josh Allen if you're going to draft him, which – I, I'm expecting his ADP to already be high, and now it gets kind of that that uh, early season schedule bump as well. So that's those are my concerns for Allen. Before we move to our next player, I want to thank today's sponsor, Simply Safe. With all the uncertainty in the world, feeling safe at home has never been more important, which is why we want to talk to you about Simply Safe Home Security. They are longtime friends of the show, our studio. While we are not there, we know that it is being protected because it is in the hands of Simply Safe. And what is great about Simply Safe, it, it, like it's easy. You get comprehensive protection for your home, and there's no technician, there's no salesperson. They don't come out and disrupt your life. There's not 
an outrageous monthly fee or a two-year contract. You just order it online and you set it up for yourself. It takes about an hour and now your home is under 24-7 protection with emergency dispatch for break-ins, fire for about 50 cents a day. We love Simply Safe. We love that they are a sponsor of this show. We love the company. They are they are taking care of their customers. And you can head to simplysafe.com slash footballers and you're going to get free shipping. You're going to get a 60-day money back guarantee. They're putting their money where their mouth is. That is simplysafe.com slash footballers to make sure that they know our show sent you from Simply Safe and all of us here wishing you safety and good health. Can I can I go old old man for a minute? Sure. Ooh, I mean, please. I kind of always do, so I don't know why I'm asking permission. Um, <laughs> yeah, be yourself, a stranger. <laughs> but you, you brought up. Be, can I be myself, just real quick, guys? Guys, you you brought up uh, a few things. You also at one, at one point pronounced money money, which is new for me. But uh, you you know you're not about that money. I am money, now. Money 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 no, I'm, money. I'm in it. <laughs> Uh, but but here's here's what I'm going to bring up. You talked about the pushy salespeople, guys. Yeah, I've worst. been I've been door to door. My wife has been pitched by door to door salesmen two times in the past week. No, and I about lost my mind because of all the times that I don't need a person coming to my door. You're keeping you away this, from people, so send the people to you. Two, Brilliant. And, they, and you know what that's like. That's that's like in your face. I'm not leaving even when the wife asks you to leave. Like, I, I about I lost wait. it. She op- I, I had one. I uh, We had one. Okay. It, it was a person trying to Did you to hide? Sell. Did you dive behind hey, the couch? Service? Oh, no. I, I didn't hide. I pulled up the old camera and started talking to him. It's like, uh... And I get I people got to make a you. living, but I don't like that, man. Yeah, I, I didn't... I don't recognize you. I don't even... I'm not expecting anything. What you doing here, man? No, they were security like, salesmen both times. It's like you should go away. <laughs> I don't want to talk to you. Oh man, yeah, I I almost I almost lost it. I almost uh, got in a fight, a but six weird. feet apart. You know what I mean? Yeah. All right, regress or impress, Derek Henry. Derek Henry, three hundred three carries, fifteen hundred forty yards, sixteen touchdowns. He is a tank. He is a beast. He finishes the running back three in fifteen games last year and uh before i let you guys run away with derrick henry i'll just say that i am an impress he is the mm. he's who i have projected as the carry leader for 2020 you know sure. we get we get through our projections and we're able to see kind of uh the, the league-wide projected rushing and receiving leaders i've got derrick henry with more carries than anybody else more yards than anybody else and more touchdowns than everybody else so I cannot say regress if that's how my projection ended that's up. Fair. And so, um, you know, when you give a player 20 plus attempts, they're going to find, and, and they're as good as Derek Kearney, they find a way. You know, you can look bad for 17 of them. You look good for one and you've made your week. So Derek Henry is an impress for me. Mike, go ahead. Uh, okay, I'll jump in. The I I am so torn on what to do with Derrick Henry uh, cuz I I don't want to bet against the man. <laughs> like he's he's a very very good running back. He's old school and like I prefer new school running backs, but he's very very good at what he does. But if you want to talk history, okay, since since 2000 1776. <laughs> oh, sorry. Go ahead. Since 2000 we have 109 instances of a running back with 300 or more carries. The following year, only 26 times did a player see those carries go up. 70 times over, so 65% of the time, when a running back has had 300 or more carries the next season, 65% of the time, they lose 20 or more carries the following season. Just through, I mean, this isn't saying that Derrick Henry's bad, it's circumstances change from year to year well it's the same argument just to just i'll let you continue but it's the same argument we make with michael thomas breaking records you know you yes it doesn't matter marvin harrison michael thomas you don't do the same thing every single year yeah so like i said i don't i don't want to bet against the man derrick henry i still have him projected very high let's i'll pull it up like i have derrick henry as my rb6 right now so even though i'm talking about the odds are against him i'm still 
betting on him. But like one thing goes wrong for Derrick Henry, and then you see that a one-dimensional player things collapse very quickly, like because he doesn't have the pass catching to rely on. Like the rookie that they drafted, Evans, he's a he's a good player. They had they took a hit to their offensive line. I know they spent a first round pick on a guy to replace Conklin, but you can't just automatically assume a rookie who's never taken a snap is going to play as well as Conklin did last year. So there are definitely concerns for me, even though I still have him up in my as a running back six as a as a must draft early round running back. Yeah, I've I've got him at the exact same spot. Running back All six. Right. Um, he, he impresses the heck out of me just in general. I am pretty much a guy that in fantasy, I, I don't, my rule is I, I don't want to draft a running back who doesn't catch the ball, but that rule has been amended where I don't want to <laughs> draft a running back that doesn't catch the ball unless his name is Derrick Henry, because he's, you know, the reason you don't want that is you don't want a game script that is a guy could just not show up, but it doesn't matter if they're winning or losing. They're giving the ball to Derrick Henry every single game. Um, I like you, Andy, I've got him currently projected for the most carries, the most yards and most rushing touchdowns. Obviously, if he was to ever get involved in the passing game, he would just be unbelievable. I don't think that's going to happen. I think they've, they've got Deion Lewis's replacement in Darrington Evans. Uh, so I, you know, to me, I think Derrick Henry is not going to do what he did once Ryan Tannehill took over. He was on pace for 2000 rushing yards and 21 touchdowns. But 1,900 touchdowns, actually. <laughs> right, 1,900 <laughs> uh, touchdowns. Uh, just ground, rushing touchdowns. Yes. Um, but, you know, you look at when the offense wasn't good. You look at him with Marcus Mariota at the beginning of last year. He was still on pace for, you know, double-digit touchdowns, 1,100 rushing yards. So I think it's going to be in the middle. Um, and I, I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely in on Derrick Henry to impress one of, this year. One of the things that, is interesting about Henry is, I mean, we had years with players for, you know, LeGarrette Blunt comes to mind where it's all goal line opportunity and you can still have a relevant season just by being a beast inside the 10. Henry already offers that capability, but part of it is confidence in the Tennessee defense in terms of that game script that Mike's talking about. You're hundred percent right. If the game goes to where they got to put it in the arm of Tannehill, it's not going to be Derrick Henry in the field, but Tennessee's got a top 10 defense to me. And that should mean that more often than not, he's going to have the opportunity, whether that offensive line uh, is able to hold up the way it did last year. Some of the variables you brought up, those are important things. You can't just take last year's numbers and project everything forward and not recognize the fact that regression happens. But it sounds like deep. we all have them you know, inside that top 10. They're they're deep in the running right now for Jadavion Clowney. So if they were to add him oh, to that man. good defense, that's that's great for Derrick Henry. It's and like I'm saying of, of betting against Henry, I don't want to do that. But also betting on Henry, like you're saying, Andy, I'm betting on the defense. I'm betting on the offensive line. I am betting on Ryan yep. Tannehill all to be good. Where like that's that that sucks to have to do that for a running back. Where I could just say, oh, the player is good and he catches the ball, so he's gonna be on the field no matter what. It is. The, it feels yeah, a little I've, bit I've like the Marshawn years. Sure, right? yeah. It feels and, a little oh, bit like you the, did not the Marshawn bet Lynch against years. Marshawn Lynch. So that's a fool's errand to bet against Marshawn. <laughs> well, we it's a good transition because we we're going to talk regress or impress with uh, one of last year's my guys that chose to torture me with his butterfingers, and that is Chris Carson, who ended the year RB eleven. There's nothing to be ashamed of, but he had a great year. Yeah, and and you know what? It was it was something where every time he touched the football, you were impressed with Chris Carson. Uh, you know, forty seven targets, thirty seven receptions, almost three hundred carries on the ground. Looked great. Struggled with fumbles. He's a regress for me, mm. and and that is not to say that Chris Carson can't have some solid fantasy value, but I have him down at RB seventeen, I believe. Finished last year at RB eleven. I would be absolutely shocked if Seattle doesn't add another back to this uh, running back room. And so with Carson, Penny, probably a shorter leash with the fumble variable this year if they have another back in that room, I am simply not confident that you could count on Carson as an RB1 for fantasy. 
Yeah, you, you bring up the running back room, and I think that is that, – that's And there are Marshawn the, rumors, by the way. <laughs> right, I know. Marshawn's – his agent has been in contact with the Seahawks about coming back again. Um, the pessimism, which is very rare, uh, coming from Pete Carroll over Rashad Penny, yeah. um, you know, everybody, everybody who's ever been injured is totally fine if you're Pete Carroll. And yes. they look great. And they're ready to go. And now he's talking about starting him on the pup to begin the season. You know, it was a late injury. It wasn't just a normal ACL tear uh, for Rashad Penny. So when I look at that room, I mean, they drafted a fourth round DJ Dallas. Okay. Uh, Travis Homer is nothing. Uh, you know, it's it's like, I feel like Chris Carson. I've got him right now as a running back one. You have him I've as a last him. man standing situation. I've got him as a, he's got to have 300 carries because they <laughs> don't have any other choice and so but I if would they adjust go my out, rank significantly if this is the room this is the running back room they go into the season with ex no doubt exactly so you know if if Marshawn is signed if if Carlos Hyde or some other back comes in then that that's telling name you, somebody you know, slower than those two. <laughs> right that that you know and I would I would I would also append to this Chris Carson is a I feel like is a very big injury risk um he he didn't miss he missed one game last year but he has, in his history, been injured. He's injured right now, right? He's not. He's yeah. he's, he's on pace. He's coming off of a, a fractured hip. Yeah, I mean, he's he's he hasn't missed the games, but he's still been injured. And the way he runs is like injure me, please. So I, you know, odds say that he will regress, um, just because of uh, you know I, I I you know injury and um you know the the uh, potential of bringing in someone else. But as it stands right now, I've still got him as an RB1, getting a lot of volume uh, for a really good offense. I will say uh, we were I was joking about betting against Marshawn Lynch. If he's signed to Seattle, I'm not very concerned. Like, do you guys really – you think Marshawn still has it? They No, it doesn't matter, though. It doesn't matter if he has it because he's got the eyeballs of, of Pete Carroll. And the Pete Carroll will put a player out there. He doesn't care if – he is at his best if he fits the offense and what they want to do. I think that Marshawn will represent a huge goal line hit to Chris mm. Carson and then, you know, establish the play action for, for Russell. Yeah, and, and Chris Carson is, you know, up in my RB1 because he's a 300 carry back right now. Marshawn Lynch comes in. It's just one of those things where it's like, okay, now that there's an, there's an option to not give Chris Carson 300 carries. So, yeah. And that, yeah, that, that 300 translated to running back 11 last year. Yeah, I am unfortunately I I have to hedge here because I if, if Chris Carson is completely a waiting game if you're playing like best ball. Oh yeah, right now. Yeah, yeah. So like if I had to make the decision right now, yeah, what's your bet? I would probably go in on him. Uh, I don't know where his ADP is in best ball right now. I would probably go in on Chris Carson, but this is a situation that needs to materialize o over the over the off season. If Marshawn was the addition, you're less concerned than maybe we are? Correct. Okay. Let's talk about uh, Kenny G. Oh, oh. Mm. Mm. So oh man. Mm. Toes. 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 All right. Toes. Kenny G, wide receiver <laughs> six from last year. Smooth. Smoother than this episode has been. <laughs> Kenny G overcame a quarterback carousel in Detroit. I, you know, so impressed with with what he represents to an offense. 65 for 11, 90, and 11, which was tops in the NFL in terms of touchdowns uh, by a receiver. 116 targets. Big play guy, but still can be a volume player, goal line player because of the size. Regress or impressed with Kenny G? I... I'm going to stick with the impressed number because I have him at five right now on my 2020 projections, and oh he finished my. at he finished at six. He should have Stafford back. I think it's more of the same for Kenny G. I do as well, and I hate to say it because so far I've been impressed by all of these players. So it's impress or impress. <laughs> do you want me to pick what? somebody else that you no, can be? He, here's the truth. I know, I know Johnson. I know I was super impressed. Um, I know the 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 players were yet to cover. Everyone else is a regress for me uh, from this point on. But whoa, yeah, the people got to stay tuned to the episode. Hey, well, they they want to hear the deets. They want to know who I'm uh, <laughs> regressing on. But you know, th this is you look at his splits with Matthew Stafford. He was awesome last year, and he had garbage quarterback play for a, a lot of it. Kenny G is the clear number one for 
the team and and I think that you know Stafford if he can play 16 how does how does Galladay get worse you know he, he's right. he's super young very talented just still becoming a, a better wide receiver if his Sm- quarterback so play improves yeah, so, so. and his saxophone play improves <laughs> how does he go backwards he was he was averaging 80 yards a game with Matt Stafford he, like he was four PPR points better per game when Matt Stafford was playing and he's still oh my oh as my a monster so yeah I'm I'm in on Kenny Gall what do they what do they call that uh you know how saxophone players can mm-hmm. keep the note going like they can uh, cycle their breath circular breathing yeah you think you think he can do that he can definitely think do that. I can do it no <laughs> <laughs> we don't care about I'm your talking breathing, about Kenny G Mike. man is that why he's so good? He can just he keep all, it going. Like he always has oxygen. He's not. He's not huffing and puffing. There's it's always science. fresh oxygen coming in. It's yeah, science, he, Mike. He, he does the opposite of most saxophone. He never exhales. It's all <laughs> inhale. Drink it well, in. That's Drink like that in air. Singing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome right. to the show, everybody. Thanks oh, for tuning man. in. This is this is great. My background today is a salute to Jerry Stiller, by the way. Oh, yes. If you're watching on YouTube.com slash the fantasy football. Is that the, is that the URL? Fantasy, <laughs> the fantasy footballers? It YouTube. is YouTube.com slash, slash the, the fantasy, fantasy footballers. footballers. It's been five years. Five years. That's the address. <laughs> but shout out to Jerry Stiller. One of the funniest. 92 years old. Mm. You live long when you're funny. So. Oh, man. I'm going to be. Infinite. Jason's going to outlive us is what I was saying, Mike. Mm. <laughs> Wait. Oh, yeah. It's fine. fine. I accept. He's, he's funnier. Plus, he Looking. makes all these. Hey, oh, yes. <laughs> I don't. I, don't... Dip, dip, dip. I think the. Fat... Jay Stiller wouldn't have made that joke. I think the fat comedians don't live the longest of his Yeah, but yeah the indication. track record is pretty rough. <laughs> Just laying this out there. Like, you know, I'm in a healthy oh. BMI right now. You know, Mike's been working out. Yet we do the, we do the jokes. Jason, you do the jokes about yourself. And. Then the the blood work comes back and you're fine. Oh, I'm healthy as a horse. I mean, you're healthy. <laughs> yeah, I have a bison. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Devontae Parker, regress or impress? Last year, the wide receiver. Well, I know what Jason thinks. Seven. Yeah, because uh, he said he's going to be impressed with everybody. There is, uh, it's a tall task. It's a tall task for Devontae Parker to repeat what he did. I want to, I'm not taking anything away from him. The talent, but the consistency at the quarterback position. You talked about the start to the season for Ryan mm-hmm. Fitzpatrick. There's going to be, I mean, you want to talk about an intestinal fortitude situation for fantasy owners. You make the bet on Devontae Parker. Then you watch him slow down for a couple of games to start the season and wonder if you've got the bet wrong. Then there's a quarterback change somewhere during the middle of the season. These are all variables in place. So I haven't projected. Uh, for a low, lower total stat line next year, I think it's going to be a good season. 65 for over 1,000, seven touchdowns. That's nice, but it's not what he did last year. He's still outside of that top 12 for me. Yeah, I, I've, I've got him you know, as the wide receiver 18, so it's a regression from last year. He, he projects to be the one for Miami, but if I have to bet you know, on Devontae or, or, uh, or against Parker, I'm I'm betting against Parker for sure. There's way too many variables. Here's a player who took five years to break out, has only broken out, you know, for a short period of time. While that happened, he had the gunslinging Fitzpatrick on a team that seemed like they were kind of tanking, just going nuts. You had Preston Williams go down to injury. There were n- not a lot of other options to throw the ball to, and Parker had an excellent season. Now you've got Preston Williams coming back, a sicky uh, kind of developing over that same time period into a good target. The terrible beginning of the schedule, I-, I mentioned earlier this episode, because I expect the Dolphins to get off to a slow start with that schedule, I think you see Tua come in earlier than they would want to have the rookie come in. And so if all of a sudden now you've got a rookie quarterback, uh, you know, more other other weapons there that weren't there when Parker broke out, I, I'm betting against Devontae Parker. I, I see him as a regression. I have nothing to add. <laughs> <laughs> all I started doing was thinking about if a team could combine Fitzpatrick and Jameis. And you know how sometimes they have it and sometimes they don't? 
If you could get that signal that one of those guys doesn't have it and just put the other one in, just rotate believe, back and forth. I yeah, believe the they had that in Tampa Bay. That. <laughs> it's a strong point. Yeah. <laughs> It, remember, it was a it lot was, of fun. It was QB2 that was a lot of fun. That, yeah, that was a that, lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. QB2 <laughs> on the year, but uh, <laughs> yeah, they, they, they torched slip, you sometimes. Slipped my mind. Uh, all right, last one here. I want to talk about Tyler Higby. Oof. Because I know it will be an interesting discussion. Higby, last year finished as the tight end eight, but the story was really from about week 12 on. He had two Two weeks where he was the number one overall tight end, weeks 13 and 17. He finished at five, three, and nine the other three weeks. It was a complete transformation for a player that had been there for a long period of time who had been paid in the offseason. But you're talking about more than 700 yards receiving at the tight end position. And we've talked a lot about the Rams. But what are you a regressor impressed with Higby? He ended up outside my top 12, but he's at 13. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about regress or impress, it's not the season-long numbers. It's the end of the year. It's when he was basically, you know, the best tight end or up there in the top tier with with everybody the last five weeks of the season. Is that going to be what the Rams do? We've had a lot of internal uh, discussion uh, mm -hmm. today, um, the three of us and, and um, you know, the rest of the team here about – uh, Cooper Cup and the Rams offense and the offensive line and are they going to run two tight end sets and all of those things. The reason I see Tyler Higby as a regression is really Gerald Everett. I do think that they're going to have both tight ends on the field. I think that Higby will be very involved. I've got him as a back end tight end one, but we've said this a lot. Like when you're a back end tight end one, that's not that's 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 a still a streaming option um you know Everett went down to injury after his little breakout that's when Higby went nuclear and I think you're gonna see these guys eat into each other's volume to where you don't have one superstar for fantasy so I'm uh you know a little bit weary of just imbuing those last five games on Higby going forward because some of the things that uh have been said uh, from uh Sean McVay talking up Gerald Everett and his talent and wanting to get him more involved. I just don't think it's going to be the Higby show. Yeah. Okay. That's about where I weigh into Jason in terms of the, you know, we've talked about Everett being McVay's first pick and you, you're going to have weeks where Everett will outperform Higby and that will be disappointing. It Higby is very difficult to, to figure out and, and try and project. I he's in my top 12 like you guys, but he's, he's at, he's at 11 Okay. Uh, the the nice thing for Higby is I I don't think his ADP is going to be too out of control. Like, I I think he will be one of those late round guys. And when it comes to those late round players, I know there's there's quite a few that we like this year. But it, when a player is at the end of a draft and has shown you that he has top three potential in his range of outcomes, it, it's hard to not take a shot on him. In at least in a, in a couple leagues. What you said about his average draft position is interesting because when I posted my first run through of rankings and I showed just the top 10 at every position. Am I wrong? Is he going early? He's not going. I'm not saying he's going early, but the reaction to not having Higby in that top 10 mm. from the general uh, Twitter oh, sphere okay. of, of your ranks, it gotcha. was very strong. Each position, you know, there's one player that, oh, wow, that guy's not there. That was Higby for the tight end position. Because of the impact he made for, you know, you talk about recency bias, the impact he made for fantasy owners from weeks 13 on was, you know, difference making, league winning type of yes. performances. So, and, But that's what I mean where it's, how, how do you not take a shot? How do you right. not take a shot on a player who won five, three, nine, one? That was his positional finish. Two, two times against the Cardinals. <laughs> That's yeah. and that's that's very fair, but five against Seattle, who was also terrible against the tight end, but nine against San Francisco. I mean, like, I I don't know, man. I I I I struggle so much on on where I go with Tyler Higby. Those discussions Jason was talking about, like it it started with a tweet from good friend of the show, Rich Rebar. He pointed out that in weeks one through twelve. The Rams were in 11, 11 personnel 76% of the time. That means three wide receivers are on the field. And then at the back where Higby really had his explosion, that percentage dropped to 59%, meaning that they had more 
beef. They had more tight ends on the field, and there was a noticeable effect in the pressure rate to Jared Goff, and I don't see their offensive line in, as improved heading into next year, and if it's not improved, I would see them going back to this this set that's going to feature the tight ends. It could come down to that. I don't think McVay wants – I think he wants to run 11 personnel. I, yes, I think I don't, he wants I, to. I think that's his best-case scenario because that's when his offense was clicking and things were going the way he wanted them to go. Eventually, I feel like he conceded. He just said, but, okay. But like, that, and that's why McVay is actually a good coach fair. where like a lot of coaches in the NFL will just be so hard-headed and stubborn saying, my system is the way that we win games. And McVay, he's, he conceded, this isn't winning. Let's try this other thing. And Jared Goff took off. Like the, In those final five games, Jared Goff was, was back to the fantasy stud he had been for most of two years ago. All right, we'll, we'll sneak one more in here because he opened the show for us. Darren Waller. Oh, goo 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 but let's, uh, let's make it quick because I want to get into some mailbag as well. But Darren right. Waller, last year, 94, 11, 45, and 3 on 117 targets. Things I like about Waller, any given week, he can take over. He, he's the kind of player with that athleticism. If he's the feature focal point of the offense on any given week, you could have a week-winning week from Waller. That being said, I mean, that's a, that's a high bar. Uh, tight end three. I've got him at six, so I guess I'm a regress. I think there are just more weapons, more options yep. in this offense. They added rugs. You saw the uh, the growth of Hunter Renfro, who I couldn't help but project for a high target total. Tyrell was injured on and off the field last year. He's still going to be part of the offense. And Waller's even come out and said, look, hey, I might not catch as many passes. That's fine with me. Yeah, so, well, come on, Waller. <laughs> you got to I mean, get you're the Waller. fantasy. Yeah, it's it's really just a matter of, you know, last year there were there were times where he was the clear primary target. Renfro took some time to break out, had a struggle with injury, at, you know, at one point. When you add, okay, Hunter Renfro is getting better. You spend your first round draft pick on Henry Ruggs. Uh, Tyrell Williams is back. You sign Nelson Aguilar, you know, for some reason. Uh, you draft Brian Edwards. <laughs> yeah, my man, Brian Edwards. They're bringing in a lot of uh, – they want to be able to throw to the wide receiver. They just couldn't last year. And so, you know, I can't imagine that he – maybe he still leads the team in targets, but it's not going to be with as many targets as he had last year. So I, I think he's uh, – He's a guy I would take on my fantasy team, but certainly regress from last year's peak. It, it, he'll regress on receptions and yards, but three touchdowns. <laughs> a, a dude having 1,100 yards and three touchdowns, that is completely anomalous. So it, while there will be regression there, I expect his touchdowns to rise to that, I don't know, six, six to seven range where I went into my projecting thinking Darren I'm going to be really really sad when I see Darren Waller at the end of this because he's a he's a favorite of the show it was an incredible hit for fantasy last year and there he he still was he, he was still up there as a as like my tight end 4 like he just ended up there maybe that speaks to the rest of the tight end position but I think Waller while he will regress will still be very very fantasy relevant it could come down to Derek Carr being Derek Carr too you know, you can give him a million sure. wide receivers down the field, and if Derek Carr likes that close to the line of scrimmage option, sure. then Waller could benefit uh, in in PPR. So let's do some mailbag. 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 All right. If you have a question, head to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. Click the submit a question button or dial our voicemail hotline, 302-464-TFFB. This question comes from Patrick on Twitter. One of Jason's things to remember is usually that rookie wide receivers don't break out until the second half of the season. Considering the strength of his rookie of this rookie wide receiver class, does this rule still hold? Does for me. It doesn't as much for me for this specific year. I want to be aware that there are a handful of uh, wide receivers I'm willing to take a shot on uh specifically Jefferson Rager uh, Jerry Judy Pittman C C C Pittman CD Lamb uh, I I think this year I'm I'm putting a pause on that um I still do believe that it it will hold true in general right like that most of the wide receivers who have a good rookie year they're going to have a better back half 
but I just I, I I want the shot at the breakout star, and this year seems to be you know one that you're you're gonna have to uh, you're gonna have to you know tr- try and draft them to to get them because <laughs> if if you want the breakout, I think they're gonna be on people's roster. Yeah, so when you're looking at starting players, there are I mean Judy, Pittman, and Rager should start week one, right? And Jefferson and, and Jefferson. probably CeeDee Lamb, uh, if, not in the top two, but as, yeah, as the third. I, it, it'll be very interesting, though, trying to figure out where that value proposition is for fantasy drafts. Um, Mike, on Twitter, what round does Mostert get drafted? Mm. What do you think Mostert ends up? Uh, probably in the fourth. I was going to say, might, is he a third round pick? He might sneak into the third. If we get if we get some clarity here on the Jarek McKinnon situation, who San Francisco, they still got those fingers crossed that McKinnon can be a big part of this offense. But if if that situation is completely clarified, then most of it will be in the third. It was reported um, he has not started cutting. Yeah. So Scissors you're gonna are need very to, dangerous. You're, you're going to need to start cutting. Get him the kids' ones yeah. at some point the Plastic in time. guard. A little trainer scissors over here uh, for McKinnon. I, I don't think he gets up in the third. I, I don't I don't even – I mean, I I don't even know if he's drafted in the fourth. No, I'm not saying he shouldn't oh. be, but I think he'll be disrespected. I really do. I'm I feel looking, like he's been disrespected on this show by both of you. Perhaps, yeah. and maybe yeah. we'll keep his ADP low. <laughs> So let's there keep that go. disrespect going. Yeah, I feel like neither of you have seen a rosy outcome for Mostert for whatever reason. It's not so much that I don't believe Mostert is. I mean, I think he's great. I think his team is great. I just have such a hard time rostering uh, running backs that could be healthy, active, have kicked butt last week, and when I start him <laughs> this week, he doesn't. He just it's it's you know he's running back roulette, and he's not on the field. And I think a lot of People have felt that, so sure, sure. that's why I think he, he he's probably more like a fourth, fifth rounder. Yeah, it's, it's one of the most difficult situations because it's not just what you described, but on some like mediocre running team. It's on like the best running team, but it's still true. So when you miss on him and he goes off, that sucks because he has a huge game. Mm-hmm. Um, all right, uh, let's go ahead and let's go here. Instagram from Dennis. What's the ceiling? For Hollywood Brown this year? <laughs> oh, I love this question. All right, we'll start with Jason. What is the ceiling? Before I could throw him in a bathtub. <laughs> I think the ceiling is wide receiver six. Wide rec- I, I think the ceiling. Did you, you, You're talking about a Tyreek season. I'm talking about a Tyreek season. I'm talking about a, you know having 12 long touchdowns and uh, being a guy who 12? yeah long i mean touchdowns well i'm not i'm just saying 12, 12 touchdowns, long touchdowns on the, you're the wide receiver one i'm Cover talking that about man 12 <laughs> touchdowns on the back of a lot of breakaway touchdowns i mean look he was he was drafted to be special he's a first round pick he was great out of college came in injured um, w- still was a little bit injured last year and and in 14 games i'll give you his ceiling you want to know it okay i figured it out uh, 82 receptions for 1,300 yards and nine touchdowns. I think if you change that's that's nine ceiling. to 12, Nana, that's, that's the that's the ceiling. best season that Deshaun Jackson had in 11 career years. That is bananas. That's possible, Mike. 80, 80 receptions for not 1,300 for yards is very possible for Hollywood Brown. Not for, not, not for me. I'm talking have, about a ceiling. I'm not saying you yes. can get there without a ladder, Mike. You need a ladder. I have, You're not jumping up to it. Right you gotta now. You got to climb. Explain yourself. Why can't like he my, get there? But just, just overall passing volume in, for this team. But they're a run first team. Like to me, the the ceiling for does this for change Hollywood? anything? Hollywood, <laughs> Hollywood. Look, I'll give him an extra reception for okay. that. Right. It was very nice. It was invigorating. My ceiling for Brown this year would be like eleven hundred and eight. That would be my ceiling. I have. Hollywood Brown right now is my wide receiver. 20. You sound appalled at thirteen hundred and nine, but eleven hundred and eight. Yeah, they're very uh, different things. Thirteen hundred yards. It's That's not wild, that. Man. It's one big game. One big game different. <laughs> Two hundred and one. 
Uh, I, I will say this. One of the nice things about projecting, and I'll, I'll make this promise to the Foot Clan that want to support the show uh, on behalf of these two guys. If you go, one thing that you can do to help us, it's free, it's easy, is to leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, right? So anybody who does that, I'm willing to change my projections so that all of your keepers have much better stats. <laughs> oh man, that's that's. Do you see what I'm saying? That's a solid. Oh, I, I, yeah. Are that's you? Nice. I'm, I so if you leave us a review, support the show. I'll do a little typey typey, and we'll we'll get those ceilings up. We'll pull oh, pull the ladders out, Mike. Your guys, I, are I be bought great. the UDK <laughs> here, and it says that there are ten receivers uh, who are going to catch fifty thousand yards. Guys, I just figured out the best strategy <laughs> for a new feature in the UDK. They plug their roster in, then they look at the UDK, <laughs> yeah. and there are only certain players. They're loving it's a, it. It's an algorithmic adjustment that happens. I don't based know how on I did your it, roster. But I drafted the top twenty players <laughs> overall. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right, we're going to get our staff on this quickly. All right, uh, speaking of Hollywood, we want to thank Pristine Auction, yes. a Hollywood signed jersey, mm. Marquise Brown, $70 yesterday at pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS, get a $10 credit when you want to buy a piece of signed sports memorabilia from your favorite team player. Maybe you want to search for some Jordan gear. I uh, you might be in the mood. That's probably going to cost you a little bit more than Hollywood oh, so Brown. You, you better have a <laughs> better have an open wallet if you're going after Jordan gear. Well, minus ten dollars. Code ball. Oh, that's yeah, right. That's great. Code ballers. All right, that is it for today's episode of the show. Thank you for staying with us. That was a fun ride, and we'll talk to you soon. See you next time, Foot Clan. Goodbye. for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. Footland, don't forget about today's sponsor, Simply Safe, protecting your home, making it as simple as possible with no technician, no salespeople that need to come upset your life, no outrageous monthly fees or two-year contracts. Head to simplysafe.com slash footballers, get free shipping, and a 60-day money-back guarantee at simplysafe.com slash footballers.